Hi, I'm Sharon Urock. I teach at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Computer Networking Department. And today we're going to talk about the FAT file system and we'll be using FAT12 as our example to look at. I'll be starting with a floppy disk, a high density floppy disk in a USB floppy drive, a 1.44 meg capacity. I have formatted it already. Um, I used Windows 7 to format it. Uh, using the, the only file system that you can format a, a floppy disk to, FAT, and it doesn't specify FAT12, but it will be FAT12. The allocation unit size, which is going to be the cluster size with FAT, we don't choose the cluster size. The disk capacity determines the, or the um, volume capacity determines the cluster size. And it will be a very small cluster because it's a small disk. They will be 512 byte clusters, the same size as a sector. I've given it a volume label, which we'll see later. I've named the volume label My Files. I did not do a quick format. I wanted the full format done, so I unchecked quick format. And I did not create an MS-DOS startup disk, so no files were added by this format process. The disk has already been formatted. It's in the drive. When the format process happens, two things happen with a floppy disk. First, the low-level format happens, because I'm not doing a quick format, whereas the tracks and the sectors are laid out. 80 tracks per side, each track divided into 18 sectors, and there are two sides to a floppy disk. Let's use debug.exe now to look at what exactly was put on there by the file system. The file system had um, three main things added to it. The boot sector was added to the beginning, one sector in size, two copies of the file allocation table, and the root directory table. We will look at the, the boot sector first. I'm going to use debug.exe to do this. It's a program that's free with all Microsoft operating systems. I've opened up a command prompt in Windows 7. I have the drive connected through USB, it is drive A, and I'm going to start the debug program. And as you can see, I'm now at a debug prompt. I'm going to use debug's load command to load into memory the first sector of the floppy disk. So I'll put on caps lock so that we can see the difference between L and I. L for load. Where do I want to load this? I want to load it into offset zero. From which drive do I want to load? Drive A is drive zero, so zero. What starting sector do I want to load? The first sector on the disk is sector number zero. How many sectors do I want to bring in? One sector. Now I can hear the drive being accessed and read from, and currently that one sector, 512 byte sector, is being written into memory at offset zero. Now I'd like to view the contents of offset zero, so I'll use the debug dump command. D for dump, from where do I want to do this memory dump? From offset zero, where I loaded this. And now I've dumped to the screen the first 128 bytes of the sector. Those have the most important parts of the sector, so that's all we'll look at. The first part of the boot sector on the floppy disk. The contents of the boot sector, we see all of this. Anything in memory in a Windows operating system, we see in hex. So therefore, debug is showing us all 128 bytes worth of the um, that 128 byte dump in hex. Over here is debug's attempt to convert all of those bytes into ASCII. And in some cases, it's successful. In other cases, not, because it's not ASCII code all of the time. And over here is the offset address to, you know, for when we need to locate individual bytes. I'm going to pick out all of the parts to the first, you know, the main parts in the first um, one fourth of this sector that, you know, what is put into this first sector when the disk is formatted. You have a copy of this chart in your packet. It's the um, chart showing everything that's in the, the boot sector. 
you know, you'll need to refer to it in your assignments. I'm going to look at it right now. According to your chart, the first 10 bytes of the boot sector is machine language code. And actually, there are two separate things in those 10 bytes. The first three bytes, starting at offset zero, meaning zero bytes away from the beginning. So here's offset zero. The first three bytes can contain a jump statement where to jump to to the actual bootstrap code. Because in between here, that's not executable code. That's data that the code studying, starting somewhere down here, right here actually, is going to be using. This jump statement, if we'd use unassemble to look at it, would be a jump statement that would jump to offset address 3E. 3E being, here's the three row. If this is 3F, this would be 3E. This is the beginning of the rest of the executable code that's going to be in the, the um, boot sector. Before 3E is initialization type of data that's going to be used by this code that's running. This code would be used if this was a boot disk. If it's not a boot disk, it's not used. The operating system use what's, uses what it needs. Now the rest of the 11 bytes are the OE, OEM ID. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bytes right there. Uh, that just describes basically what operating system formatted this disk. And we can see that some parts of it are in ASCII. Um, MS-DOS 5 version is what did the formatting for this disk. Next, we'll move over to offset B. If this is offset 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B. Offset B is the next one over. Two bytes worth of the description for bytes per sector. These two right here. This is a quantity. It's a two-byte quantity. Remember that in a Microsoft operating system, values are stored in little endian format. So if a value takes up more than one byte, it's going to be stored in little endian, so the bytes get reversed. The high order byte was stored last, the low order byte was stored first. So my value for bytes per sector is displayed and stored 0, 0, 0, 002, but the actual value is 0, 0200. 0, 0. And this is a hexadecimal number. Hexadecimal 200 0, 0 is equal to decimal 512. Each sector is 512 bytes, which is what we would expect. The next one byte over at offset D, if this is B, C, this would be offset D, is the number of sectors per cluster. How large is the cluster? We saw when we looked at the formatting window that each cluster was going to be 512 bytes, or one sector size. And that's what we see for this value here for the sectors per cluster, the size of the cluster that this was formatted to. The next two bytes over, Um, is not really important for FAT12, but it's here for later file systems. This is the number of relative sectors. Remember little endian, it stored 0, 1, 0, 0, reverse the bytes so that we have 0, 0, 0, 1. There's one relative sector. What is a relative sector? A relative sector is the quantity of sectors that follow the boot sector but come before the first fat, but including that first sector that makes up the fat. Well, we've got one sector here, so there are no additional um, um, sectors between the end of the boot sector and the file allocation table. The purpose of having some of these relative sectors is to allow for needed growth, more information to be stored than can fit into one sector at the beginning of the disk. That's not needed on an early disk like the floppy disk. The next sector over holds the value 2. What's held in there is the number of file allocation tables. When you format a disk using FAT, there are FAT12 or FAT16 anyway, you're going to have two file allocation tables created. 
The first file allocation table is going to be the um, primary file allocation table. The second, a mirrored copy. With FAT32, you can change that if you want or keep it the same. But 16 and 12, you've got your two copies, one of them mirrored. The next two sectors over, or two, sorry, the next two bytes over. The maximum number of root, in, root directory entries. We've got a hexadecimal value E000. Reverse the bytes so that I have 00, zero E0. Zero. That's a hexadecimal number. The decimal equivalent of that is 224. You can have in the root directory, when you format a disk FAT12, 224 entries. Remember that the first entry is going to be hold the volume label. And then in theory you could have 223 files then on the root directory as long as none of them have long file names. The next two bytes over, again we reverse the bytes, is the total number of sectors on the drive. Reverse these bytes so that I have 0B40 that's a hex number. Convert that hex number to decimal, and that will give us 2,880. This disk has a total number of sectors of 2,880, which makes sense if you consider the, the geometry of the disk. 80, sectors, 80 tracks per side, each track divided into 18 sectors, two sides. 80 times 18 times 2 is going to give you 2,880. The next one bytes, the media descriptor byte, does exactly what the name says. It's a byte that describes the media that is in here. If, this, if we were looking at the hard drive, the value we'd see here would be F9. We're looking at a, a floppy disk, a three and a half inch two-sided 18 sector floppy disk. Its media descriptor byte would be then F0. Next two bytes over. How many sectors make up a file allocation table? Keeping in mind that we have two file allocation tables. 0900, reverse the bytes so that we have 0009. 9 in hex is 9 in decimal. Each file allocation table is going to take up 9 sectors on the disk. With the file allocation size um, tables being fixed, that pretty much fixes the quantity of clusters, so, um, which is why you can't change the cluster size. In the next segment, we'll, just, we'll continue on and discuss sectors per track, which is the next part of this.